Hey everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks again for coming by. We're going to do another beautiful tutorial here on flower painting in watercolor, of course. We always uh, mention in the beginning of our um, videos that we do everything watercolor on this channel and we do different subject matter every week and we change as we go each week. We'll do maybe flowers this week, we'll do boats the next week, seascapes the following week, then maybe we'll do some architecture Maybe another week we're going to do some city scenes, some cityscapes. We're always changing our um, subject matter, but at the same point, at the same point in time, we're actually doing the same methods and techniques in watercolor over and over and over again. So that's why I always say, um, even if you're not so fond of doing flower paintings and you really love boats or seascapes or something like that, please watch this video because you're still going to learn all about the colors we use, how to mix colors, how we use our palette to our fullest advantage, how we do our washes, how we work our paintings, how we um, execute our washes and mixing colors on the paper or in the palette. So it depends. Sometimes we're mixing right on the paper. Sometimes we're mixing in the palette. So all these things, you'll get used to them and you'll get them locked into your um, mode of thinking when you're watercolor painting, if you're watching every week. So that's why I always mention, uh, please, if you're, you know, uh, just new here, maybe it's your first time here, welcome, and we have um, the subscribe button on the right hand side over here, so on the bottom right hand side of the screen, your viewing screen, you'll see the subscribe button. And if you subscribe, you'll always have my channel sending you messages every um, week saying the new videos are now coming out and you can watch them. So a, a really fun time here we're going to have each week as we paint. And again, you're going to have a wonderful time painting these flowers, and I know many of you really enjoy the flower painting uh, videos that we do here, so I'm really happy you're going to join along with us. We'll do the pencil drawing first, and then we're going to uh, get into the painting portion. And I'll lift up the mat here. We used a mat to start out with to get our borders correct. And this is the finished painting. And you can use this actually as your um, guide if you want to use this to paint from. You can do that too. You can hit pause on your video or you can hit screen capture uh, and do a screen capture and we kind of cover that in a few minutes. You'll see as we work into this video you'll see that I explain how screen capturing is a big thing. You can do screenshots of this painting just like it is now. You can do those and um, you can look it up on YouTube how to do it for your specific computer or your phone or your specific iPad or uh, devices that you use on a regular basis and that'll make it really fun for you. You can have the actual finished painting that I'm doing right in front of you on a large iPad or even a laptop computer or even your TV screen if you have your um, if you have the ability to plug your uh, devices like your phone or your laptop computer into a, your flat screen TV or your TV then you can blow this up and make this really large and you can kind of work from it from that perspective. So we'll get started in just a second. Again, thanks for stopping by and happy painting here. And we'll get going here in just a second. Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for coming by and painting with us. And, and we're having a great time here. We're actually going to start out by um, just uh, making a, a quick observation. Like when we're going to use... Uh, Let's say, uh, you know, maybe like an 8 by 12 or 8 by 14 sheet of paper. We might have a, you might have a, a larger sheet of paper and you, you trim it down, your watercolor paper, you trim it down smaller. It's always good to maybe purchase a few of these um, uh, pre-cut mats, right? And uh, you get them in different sizes. This one's a 5 by 7. And so a 5 inch by 7 inch. And then... You drop it on your watercolor paper, and then what you do is you ever so lightly, we take a pencil, and we ever so slightly just put a, a pencil mark around the border of the 5 by 7 like this. Okay, so that's ever so slightly a pencil mark around here. This way we know we at least have to have our painting that large so that we can put our mat over the top of it and then put a fr and then put it in a frame. So your end goal is to be able to put your watercolor paintings into frames. Many of you know as watercolor artists, um, you don't always know how your watercolor is going to turn out and I'm the same way. Most art watercolor artists will tell you the same thing. Sometimes your paintings will come out great 
it just happens everything clicks perfectly and your painting comes out phenomenal other times you know we're working and the painting just doesn't go right whatever we're too tired maybe at the time when we're working or we've um maybe we just were tired at the end of the day and we tried doing a painting whatever it is or some days we just work uh, and we feel refreshed and we go in and we do a painting and it comes out just right. So each time you do a painting or a composition even, you just take a quick pre-cut mat, whatever size it is. You can buy these in all different sizes. So whatever size sheet of paper you have, you just take either a sm this size mat, maybe one a little smaller, perhaps a few quite a bit larger than this one, which is a 5 by 7 and you just do a quick little super light sk uh, sketch line around the picture window of your mat, your pre-cut mat. This way at least you know when you're going to do your painting and drawing you have to fill that up, that much area up, and you'd even want to go beyond it a little bit so this way you have some wiggle room. You can take your mat and move it around a little bit and you kind of might say, oh it looks a little better over this way, or oh it looks better that way, or down a little bit, up a little bit. So the more you can um, have a little bit of extra play in your painting you'll be better off. But the main thing is you have to have it at least this size for a 5 by 7 uh, pre-cut mat and then that'll fit into a 8 by 10 frame or whatever the frame size would be. So here I'm kind of already making a mess and getting some of the uh, paint. So you always got to be careful when you're working with your palette when you have your fresh colors out there and you're working but this won't be a problem. So just a little bit of encouragement to try to use your pre-cut mats. You buy a few here and there as you go, maybe just so you have a few and they don't you don't have to keep them clean or anything. You, you know, they're for the studio for yourself. So that you just have a guide to as the size of your painting, what it needs to be to be able to work with your matting. Because you want to always have a mat. Not always you can you can do paintings without mats, but they work good because then they fit in standard size frames and then if you give it for a gift you know you can tell somebody hey you know what I don't know what kind of decor you have but here's a painting with a mat and then you can figure out what decor you have and then you can get your frame according to your decor you might have gold frames in your house well then you want to get a gold frame to match your other frames in your house maybe or if you have black frames on a few paintings maybe you want to get a black frame so you don't always know what people are going to have for their frames or what they like for their frames for their paintings but you can you can definitely choose the mat for your painting because most times watercolors look good with light colored mats like this sand color cream beige tan off white very very light blue sometimes looks nice but you'll figure that out as you go but just a little tidbit of information okay so we're ready to start our drawing and we're just going to do some a simple uh, vase with flowers. We're going to do some beautiful red flowers, a rose, a couple roses, there's a couple other interesting red flowers, and there's some white um, flowers in this as well. So let's have a fun time. Now we said this was our very, very light sketch. Well, we can go outside that border if we want. So we'll make it a little larger than this, and then we can place the mat over it later and see how that works out. So I'm just going to go maybe a quarter inch quarter inch beyond that line with my tape. So we'll put some tape on. Tape always looks fantastic because when you peel off your tape you get a perfect crisp clean border around your painting and it almost looks like you have it matted and then if you pin it up in your studio you know you almost have like a finished painting right in your studio just when you take the tape off and pin it up on the wall, tape it up on your wall, your refrigerator, whatever you like to do. Be happy with your paintings as long as you keep working at it a little bit all the time, you're going to get better and better. So you can hang up your paintings, even if they don't look like, you know, the most perfect paintings in the world. So we have that. Now we'll just erase this line here. It's such a super light line, sketch line, that it comes right off and you won't even see it. Just like that. And I use a kneaded eraser, which is... The kneaded erasers are fantastic. They don't make any crumbs. So this way you don't have any crumbs on your paper or on your table, your working table. Because that kind of gets uh, a little bit messy with the watercolor paint. So kneaded erasers are really important. You don't want to use those uh, pink um, or those green different color erasers that they have or even the ones like this. You wouldn't want to use the eraser on the end of your pencil either because these make crumbs. 
see all those crumbs, that's not good. That'll get into the watercolor paint, your brush, it, it's terrible. So just need, needed eraser. You see these all the time, they're on all the websites, the art websites, they're in all your art stores, you get them in Amazon, wherever you want to get them, you can find them. Needed erasers. Okay, so now we're going to start our drawing, and let's start at the bottom. And we're going to have our vase on the table here. And then I'm just going to make our vase like so. And it's about this size here. It's basically a rectangle, but it flares out a little bit. So it does have a little bit of a flare going out like so. And it has a mm, thick, heavy bottom to it, so we can put that line on there. And then there's some green leaves in here, so we can... And there's some stems in here, too. Like that. And there's some other leaves like this. So it's a, 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 it's a crystal clear, uh, translucent, transparent glass vase, vase. And then what we'll do is we'll start our uh, flowers over here. There's a flower there. And I'm just going around, kind of like what I see here. So I'm drawing the flower. You're going to draw from either my finished painting or you're going to draw from my pencil drawing here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom into the pencil drawing once we're done. So you can actually uh, work from that if you'd like. It would be maybe a little better. Okay, so we have that white flower there, and then we have a, gr a green flower here that comes to there, and there's another stem there, and another small bud here and there, and then here. So I'm staying close. If you can see, I'm kind of staying close to. I'm trying to stay close to the center of where I'm working and not go too far out this way or this way because this way I can kind of like look at the size of everything and kind of judge how big I want to make something. If this flower is this big then when I look at the next flower over here and I say oh well, that next flower over here is not that big it's not as big as this and this way I'm staying close to where I'm working here if you can imagine like that and then we're just doing a little couple And there's another white flower here. Out there, like so. And then under here, there's some greens, like that. And there's some red flowers there, too. And then there's another. And then there's some green. leaves and things here. Like that. Okay, so we're just kind of working our way around and then up here there's a green leafy plant there, and then there's another, bit of some green flowery kind of plants there, and up here, like that. And what else do we have here? We have this one, and then we have this one here. Like that. And then up here, we're going to start again 
over here with this white flower here and we're going to make our another beautiful red rose here and then another one on top here maybe we'll make that one a little smaller like so then we're going to have another beautiful leaf here it's like a almost looks like a bird of paradise but it's not really and then this over here is another red flowery type shape there and then we come down over here and then we'll have another white flower there and then over here we have more white flowers and there's some areas you can just let them be don't don't worry about Don't worry about uh, being perfect with everything. You know, you kind of, you realize when you're starting to paint, we're drawing here quite a bit. You can see I'm, you know, you might want to take a break. I'm kind of going at a good pace here and I feel refreshed and I can keep drawing here, which is fine. But sometimes if you're drawing very fine flower shapes and things like this, take a break maybe. Maybe start out and get half of this done and take a break. Uh, and then come back and finish everything up here. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I can keep working. So that's you have to be the judge of how much how much time you can work before you need a, a break to keep uh, the concentration levels, levels going good. And uh, I'm feeling good, so I'm just going to continue here. Like that, so... We have our white flower here, and then we have that other green flower here. And then we have a large green leaf here. And then we have another like that. So I feel like I have a good Maybe this is, uh, if you need a little kneaded eraser just to, maybe maybe one of the leaves or something or flowers need, needed a little bit of, you know, erasing, you have, to, you have to adjust a few things. But with a painting like this and a drawing like this, you really are at the, really just having fun drawing it and ha having a good time with it. And you realize once you start painting this, you're not going to be following every line in here. This is just like a basic format for you that when you go in and start painting, it'll all make sense because you're concentrating on your drawing of your flowers and your vase and your leaf forms and all these different things. So as you go and draw this, you know, you're drawing pretty accurately what you see, right? However, when you go in and start painting this, you can have more fun and be a little more loose. So what I'm saying is you're not going to be looking at this really uh, closely and painting every little detail. You're just going to, this is like your basic format that you're going to be working with. And then once you start putting your paint on, you're going to adjust a little bit and do some different things and have fun um, with the paint. And kind of like, almost like you're going in and creating a brand new composition over the top of your pencil, pencil work. So your pencil work gets you familiar with the bouquet that we're drawing, the flowers, the shapes, you know, you're looking at everything, you're kind of feeling it out. And then once you're done with the pencil sketch, when you're going in with your paints, that's a whole nother kind of part of it where you're going in and you're, you have the basic format of what it looks like, but you're going to change things a little bit and you might, you know, not be as strict and be really like, oh, I've got to get every little line in here painted just right. No, you're going to go in, have fun, and you stay close to your lines that you draw on your contour drawing here but it doesn't have to be exact. You can make a flower a little larger than you want, or if you want to make something a little larger, you can do that, or if you want to make something a little smaller, one of the flowers, or if you want to add a few leaves or a stem or a splash or two, you can do all those things. Just have fun. It's a creative process. Does that make sense? It's a creative process, so you never have to feel like you're locked into like 
sticking with every line and every little bit of detail that you draw. Your drawing is just a basic guideline for you so that when you go in and paint, you actually just have a good blueprint to, to start with, and then you develop your painting as you go, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. All right, well, um, I thank you again um, for coming by and painting with us here and drawing. We're doing this beautiful flower arrangement. Oh, if I mentioned, if I didn't mention, um, if you're just brand new and you, this is your first time here at my uh, YouTube channel, thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that you're going to subscribe on the right-hand side down here below the screen. So this way, feel free to subscribe. This way you won't lose uh, my channel here. You'll, you'll start to get the um, notifications that a new video comes out every you know week. We're doing new videos every week on the weekends. And then sometimes in the middle of the week, we do videos you know all the time consistently. So you'll get those if you subscribe below on the right-hand side. I would like you to do that if you like this video so far and you think it's something you're going to want to keep following. And uh, for everyone else that's uh, been here a while and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because, um, you know, this way you don't miss out on any videos. You can always follow what I'm doing. And if you don't like a video or two once in a while, you skip those. But you'll probably find something you're going to like every couple weeks or so because I change my subject matter all the time. So you might not like boats or seascapes, but you might really like flowers. So we're always going to come back and do flowers after a couple of weeks or so. Um, so that's why I say if you, if you subscribe, you're going to be so much better off. Don't feel like I'm ignoring anybody out there. If you like certain subject matter, just let me know in the comment section down below. But I know I, that's why I always mix up my subject matter so that I make sure everyone's getting a little bit of what they like here and there. I can't make every I can't make every video flowers because then a lot of the other people are going to be unhappy that we work with, all of our fellow artists. So let's let's all be happy here together and we'll have plenty of happy paintings going forward, okay? Week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're here for you and um, we're going to continue. So I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we're going to start painting everybody. Let's get excited here. Oh, we're just about ready to paint. The only thing I noticed, I didn't put my... Um, this is basically a vase on a table. So whenever you're painting, let's say, flower arrangements or still life, it's really a good um, rule of thumb to try to establish your table. And I looked at my reference photo that is may have some issues with copyright so I can't really put it on the screen so that's why I always say please um, work for my my video here feel free to take my pencil drawing and do a screen capture of that or leave it on pause to draw from so what I'll do is now I'm gonna zoom in on the pencil drawing here like that and I'm gonna see if I can maybe adjust the lighting here a little bit um, that might be a little bit easier to see, and then maybe I can even, like that. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to see the drawing, the pencil drawing. Now you can do a screen capture of this, uh, print screen, screen capture, or you can just leave it on pause and try to draw from this. Or it might be easier uh, to draw from the finished painting, because the finished painting you're going to see all the colors and the shapes of the flowers and the leaves and everything so it might be easier for you to draw from my painting once I'm completed and I'll have that on the first part of the video on the beginning first few minutes as well as at the end of the video you'll see the finished painting as we finish it up when we're painting so that choice is up to you how you want to do it but um, this is a pretty straightforward uh, flower painting composition so you, you shouldn't have an issue either way but that is the, pa the pencil drawing here can even zoom in a little more like that and again you can hit pause or you can do a screen capture of this with your phone your laptop your iPad any kind of device you have you can look that up online how to do a, a screenshot or how to do a screen capture on YouTube you just type that in how to do a screenshot how to do a screen capture and you, do, you would just type in what kind of device you have um, how to do a screen capture with my iPhone and then you fill in the blank. What type of iPhone do you have? Is it a 5, a 2, a 13, a 12? iPhones are 
coming out all the time new iPhones for you know each uh, year and then as well you might have a laptop computer and you might say how to do a screenshot or how to do a screen capture with my Dell laptop and then you might put like what type of Dell laptop is it is it a, a Latitude or an Inspiron and you might put as much information you can put in but YouTube will give you back the answer and it'll have somebody there showing you exactly how to do it. Pretty much everyone's always out there covering all the details of all the technologies and the things like that. You might have a um, iPad. You might type in how to do a screen shot or screen capture with an iPad. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out again. We're going to start painting. I just figured I would mention that. And I think that's good. I'm going to turn back on my left light over here on the left, like that, so we have a little better lighting for our palette. You'll see my colors a little better with that light on over here. So I have two lights, basically. I have a light over here overhead on top of the table above us, and then I have another light over here to the left up above, and that shines down on the palette. So this way you can see the colors clearly on the palette, and then we have the other light here above our work. So let's start out. We're going to use just um, a couple brushes, I think maybe two or three brushes. I'm probably going to use um, a, a number six, a Raphael. And this is a um, Kalinsky Sable brush. I'm going to put a little bit of water in my water bucket. So this, this brush is uh, wonderful. It's got a really nice point on it. Holds lots of water. Then the next one we'll use it as a, a, a Da Vinci, um, Pierre Kalinsky, a Da Vinci travel brush. Number five. It's a number five brush. Kind of small. So compared to the number six, this is the number six round brush. And this is the number four. This is actually number four here. Travel brush. So we have a number four and a number six round brush. Natural hair brushes. Kalinsky sable squirrel hair brushes, basically. Or sable, actually. Sable. Sable uh, hair brushes. And then this here is a um, uh, needlepoint brush. Number 8 needlepoint brush. Alvaro Castanet makes these. These he, You can get these at his website. And then you can get these at um, Amazon or on any of your major art stores online. The uh, Raphael, number 6. Easy to spot that. It has the orange tip. And these are easy to spot also. These are the travel brushes with the plastic handles and you can you can um, pack them away if you're out painting outdoors doing compositions outside you can just put these in your your pocket and then when you want to go out if you're going outdoors to paint you want to do a couple compositions outdoors you just put your brush together like that and then you have an, a beautiful brush to work with or a couple and they make these in all different sizes too but this happens to be number four Okay, so we have these three brushes. I think these are going to be fine to do this. Uh, this is a 5 by 7 painting. So we'll put our brushes down over here. I'll start out with... Um, maybe I'll start out with the number 6. And um, we're going to get some greens right away. We're going to start out with greens. A little burnt, um, burnt umber too. We want to warm and cool so this is a really you know a cool green and then add some burnt umber here some burnt sienna here so I'm trying to, and then some raw umber so I'm trying to make a little mix of colors I don't want to just go in with one color that's the real you'll find that watercolors look really good when you mix your colors a lot and add a lot of excitement to your colors right you wouldn't want to just go in with one green like um, let's say um, you wouldn't want to go in and say, oh, I'm going to do a green for my uh, my leaf forms. And then you just take one green like this, and then you just, the whole painting, you're just using that one green. That's going to look very boring. So that's why you always see me, I'm mixing all my colors warm and cool. You have a cool green here. You can even add some cobalt blue up here, make it even cooler yet. And then you add some warm colors, some burnt, burnt umber, some burnt sienna, some raw umber. Maybe some raw sienna over here too. 
This way you have a nice, beautiful selection of colors and you can just uh, harmonize them together. And you'll find that you're really going to have a good looking painting if you're mixing those colors. So here I'm going to take that, do that greenish blue, then I'll go in and get some of the browns and the reds. And already I can say that looks better. Then we're going to do some alizarin crimson, beautiful red, and then some rose matter, which is a more of a lighter uh, tonal value, a lighter pinkish color. And we're going to start getting in some of our red colors in here for our flowers. There's a little bit of red there, too. And as you can see, I'm mixing lots of color. I'm letting all the colors mix together. These red, this red flower comes down here a little bit. I'll go straight into my alizarin crimson. Like that. And then already we can see we have really good colors now. We have good colors working for us. So that we're not looking kind of boring and and there's some green here, like that. And again, I'm using my pencil drawing as my guide as to where I'm placing my colors. And I keep an eye on that as I go. And the key is to not get too worried about every single detail of pencil line, but just overall kind of follow the same colors and you're seeing in the picture or in this painting so you're going to follow my painting at the end or in the beginning of my video for your for your guide when you're painting this and you'll be fine so here we're going to do some cadmium lemon yellow I have to work that a little bit and mix it around a little bit because it tends to uh, so that's kind of got that lemony look looks good I always rinse off my brush continually, so you might not always see me here with a, a full screen of everything I'm doing, but always remember my, my water container is on the right hand side. This happens to be a canteen, a metal canteen container. I have that over on my right hand side. Next to that I have a small sponge. I cut a little small piece of sponge. This is like a sponge you have for the kitchen. I set that next to my water container and I rinse my brush and then tap it on the sponge. And then also sometimes I'll even use a tissue and take off a little more water on the tissue as well. So between my sponge next to my water container, so if I have my sponge next to my water container, I rinse my brush off, tap it on the sponge to get a little water off, and then even if I need to take more water off, I'll use a, a, an extra bit of tissue to get even more water off to dry the brush off a little more. Because usually when you rinse your brush, there's a ton of water in it, so you don't want to constantly be rinsing your brush and then flooding out all of your palette or your paper with with water so you want to keep a good a good you want to really keep a in your consciousness and in your mind you want to make sure you're um keeping your brush from having too much water on it that's a big problem a lot of artists have um that are kind of starting out or been painting a while but they're not quite sure how much water they're going to need in their brush it's always important to try to take some water off your brush right away and this way you can go in and get your paints right out of your palette and then you're going to have um, much better colors on your your painting Okay, so let's continue here. We have some more alizarin crimson. So again, I rinse my brush, dry it off on the sponge, even sometimes I'll dry it off a little bit on the tissue. And we'll work over here a little bit. OK. 
Okay, and then here we're going to go with some more green. And there's a bit of green here, like so. And you'll notice when I'm doing this painting that I, I don't fill in all of the areas with paint. I leave some white paper in there. You'll see that as we go. I'm not going to try to um, just fill everything with paint. I want to try to keep some I'll get some straight. Maybe even we'll go with some French ultramarine blue. Get a little bit of some darks in there. I did see a couple of darks, and if you can add a little French ultramarine blue and, and some... I had some uh, alizarin crimson on my brush. It turned into a purple. That's fine. That little bit of purple looks good. So that's one of those things when you're kind of working with watercolor. You'll, you'll see you'll have a little fun things that happen on your paper. Okay. Now we'll go in with some more greens. And you can kind of see I'm doing a little bit of that quick, kind of like f uh, flicking motion or quick little, st that looks good if you can do that. It kind of keeps some of the painting looking a little more exciting and uh, like there's some more quicker brush strokes going on, which looks good. And then I just add a couple splashes there. The key to the splashing on something like this is you want to have a drier brush and go in and get... the paint off the palette which is not there's not a ton of water on here you can kind of see that it's not too much water where it's flooding down and so that's just another thing with splash I have a video on splashing just just type in Chris Petri splashing technique and you'll see I have two or three videos at least maybe maybe four or five actually in my archives but if you just type in Chris Petri into YouTube and then put splashing technique I go over all my splashing techniques so you can kind of learn how to do it in a more focused way where I'm not just covering it now for, t you know, five seconds and telling you this is how to do splashing. I cover it in detail, but you'd have to look at my other videos on that. And when you have time, go and do that. Check it out. So if you don't want to do any splashing on this painting, that's fine. I understand. But you'd want to look that up on YouTube so you can you can try it out. And um, we're going to continue here. We're going to do some more yellow. So we'll have a little bit of a yellow there. And then down here, too. Okay, so we can kind of see we are really having a great time so far. We're working around our painting. We're getting those gorgeous, beautiful reds and uh, greens and mixtures of color. I might go with my smaller number four now, just so I can get a little more detail. And there's some darker mix here, so that's that. French ultramarine blue and a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson there. And I forgot to pencil in another couple. And 
there's another couple small forms there some branches we'll paint those in we might do those with the needlepoint brush and then we're going to go over here and there's some more rose matter here and alizarin crimson so we're going to get a few more of those flower red flower shapes in like that and there might be some darker shapes over there some shadowing I would say the light is coming straight straight this way we can always make our light insignia on our paintings so we know so here on this painting the light is pretty much behind us so we don't see any of the light bulb in this light fixture here this spotlight So the lights, the lights, if you can imagine this light spotlight, it's behind us. So we kind of draw it the same way. If it was in front of us, it might look like this with the light bulb like that. But this happens to be the lights behind us, front, frontal lighting. So we keep aware of that so that that'll really make our painting look better. And then I'm going to do these a couple of these uh, stem forms. Okay, a few of those. And then we can even start getting in some cerulean blue, which since I'm going to use cerulean blue, I want to make sure I start to add it a little bit everywhere. So let me take some of that cerulean blue and add it. Other areas. And then what I'll do is I'll paint around this grouping of flowers here. That'll be our background color, the cerulean blue. Like that. And that'll be our background color. And I just sort of mix mix that out a little bit. Okay, we're gonna let's take a break now. I'm starting to feel a little bit like I, it's a good time to take a little bit of a break. Let some of this dry a little bit, and um, I think uh, that should be fine to take a break now. And then we'll come right back once this dries a little bit, maybe 10-15 minutes. This paint will sort of set up and start to dry a little more, and then as we work more inside the center of this bouquet, it's going to look a little better uh, when we don't have too much water. Um, mixing and mingling with all these other washes. If we let these other washes here and there kind of dry a little bit, then we can go in and do the other washes in this central part of the bouquet. It's going to go a little easier for us and we're not going to have too much of that uh, watercolor flowing out and blossoming and blooming as they call it, where it kind of floods out into the other areas you don't want it to. Does that make sense? So here we're going to just keep with our uh, game plan, taking a break, and we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll come back in like five, 10 minutes. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, we're getting back started again and uh, we're having a great time here. We're enjoying ourselves, painting this uh, wonderful flower arrangement here. Um, can you see all the different colors we're mixing? Does, does that, uh, can you see that? How we've added all different mixtures of colors we used Alizarin crimson and rose matter for our roses and our red flowers here, as well as we use some 
alizarin crimson and french ultramarine blue to make a purplish color which we kind of did we just happened to mix that while we had some things on our brush and it turned out to be a beautiful purple so we added some darker purples under here as you can see here and there so we added lots of variety of colors here and shadows and then we added for our greens lots of green we used sap green we used olive green we used a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow we even used a little bit of cadmium yellow for some of our um, other um, flowers and leaf forms to give us a really good variety of colors here so this is a really vibrant beautiful uh, floral arrangement that has many colors in it we're not kind of getting too much um, focused on a limited palette here but basically we're using a lot of colors so I hope you see that it really looks good too it looks fresh it looks really nice let's keep working on this so I still have my number four travel brush here and uh, I'm gonna start working some of the greens over here so I'm going to take some of that sap green and um, maybe a little bit of some of the cerulean blue and then we're going to create that's good there and then we're going to do some other some of these other leaf forms and then we can add some cadmium lemon yellow that looks pretty good and we're going to take some more of that cerulean blue and we're going to try to go around so we're, we're negative shape painting over here these flowers over here on this so I'm just doing a little bit of color here a little bit of splashing Okay, now I'm going to change the water in my bucket. I can kind of see that my water is getting a little bit muddy, so our, our colors aren't looking as fresh as they should. So, And I'm just trying to get some of that cerulean blue. around the uh, painting and uh, we have some more flowers over here and there's a little bit of purple so I'm going to try to do a little bit of shadowing here some of that purple light purplish color inside the leaf uh, the petals of the flower and a few a few places like so and then some more greens here And we'll do some burnt umber and sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. We're just going to mix up a little bit of a darker dark there. And let's go with another alizarin crimson here. And I'm just going to do some more. some purple
And we just have that other. flower shape there and we're going to continue on some and then here I think this looks good if I just kind of do a quick little bit of um Brush strokes, just quick brush strokes there. And okay, and then we're going to go with more sap green over here. we're going to do our vase so we're going to do some of that those stems there's a couple leaves down in that vase too so they might have a little bit of cobalt blue maybe we'll do some cobalt blue down here at the bottom And then some more here too. Cobalt blue looks good. It's got that kind of fresh looking maybe a little French ultramarine blue at the bottom. And I might just put a little bit of extra color here along the side here where the, ta the table is. And I'll put a little red there too. And some red here too as well. I want to try to get some of the same colors that we used throughout our painting. I'd like to add those too along this edge here just to give us some some more French ultramarine blue. And I try to I just try to get a little bit of a interesting uh, smooth transition into the background colors. with some splashing too as well. And I think we're really getting there. We're actually We're putting together the final um, these are a few leaf forms that I have in here. I, I went off the script a little bit as you can tell. Maybe if you can you'll kind of notice I do you know I won't always go exactly like we I kind of painted over some flowers and lines in here and that's why we, why I was saying that before earlier sometimes you're you're fine if you you're painting and you're painting and you're looking at everything and you can you can improvise and, and do, do a little bit of changes here and there and that is absolutely acceptable actually that's the fun of watercolor you can actually change as you go so you don't always have to follow exactly You don't always have to go exactly like 
we planned it in the beginning where we drew everything and said, okay, we, we're making our pencil drawing. We're able to, you know, go and change and say, well, we're going to actually... So here I'm going to do something a little different as well. I'm just doing a little bit of a different... There's maybe a leaf over here. And then I can even, well, we're going to get a little more detail in here. We're going to use our needlepoint brush. Burn sienna, burn umber, French ultramarine blue. We're going to make a little bit of a grayish. And then we can load our brush up with water and then dry off a little bit on the tissue just so we don't have too much. And then we can get a couple really beautiful um, finer lines that are subtle but look absolutely incredible in our painting here. So this gives it another layer of complexity and interesting uh, detail. So if you can take it to the next level and get those few extra bits of detail like this, it's going to look much better more interesting and you'll see that it will so you can see I did a couple extra bits of and there we have it we did this beautiful watercolor flower painting and I think you'll agree it definitely looks fresh and good looking and we can even do a few more small bits of You can do a couple more small areas of maybe some red blossoms and, and that makes it maybe some, you know, it kind of makes that red a little more interesting and balanced. But I think that looks fine. We're going to actually, let's uh, we'll peel off the tape here just so we can kind of see that we have our, we have our background table like so and then we can put our mat over that and we can kind of see how good it looks if we're to put a mat over this like so and that looks wonderful so I hope you had a lot of fun here we we have constant exciting paintings all the time here on my channel week after week we're c coming back with new subject matter flowers one week boats the next seascapes cityscapes landscapes we're doing figure painting we do everything here watercolor so you're going to learn all your methods and techniques to watercolor on this one channel here so i'm glad you stopped by i'm glad you're going to keep continuing to follow my channel you're going to learn again oodles of information and we cover the whole enchilada of subject matter here on this channel so you're not going to be missing out on anything and uh, we have a lot of fun too as well and we um, again we always stress the fundamentals every week as we're doing new paintings and compositions and even if we're working in the new format of extreme beginners which we have a series now we're doing extreme beginner series but we're using the same techniques and methods in our beginner series we're just making it a little more simple for people that are just getting started with watercolor because we want to help them along too as we uh, work forward and get better at our watercolors we want to remember that there's people that have never painted before and they're actually just picking up new supplies and brushes and paints and they've never even heard of watercolor before but they just happen to get excited about it and they want to paint along with us so eventually they're going to be painting along with us you know on these more complex paintings like this but that's why we kind of cover the whole gamut of um, uh, teaching here on this channel so we're going to do beginners series paintings 
uh, each week as well as more advanced uh, styles like this. So I'm hoping you enjoy everything here and I, I always mention feel free if you haven't subscribed right on the bottom right hand side of the screen here there's the subscribe button if you click that you'll be sure to get all my videos each week as we make them and if you hit the notifications bell which is um, when you click on subscribe it'll ask you if you want to have notifications sent to you and then that will immediately once the video comes out you'll immediately know at that very second that the new video is out and you can watch and uh, check it out and then you might be working on it in a day or two after that but I always suggest everyone to watch the video full through one time first and then come back a second time and then work through it as you paint and draw and paint your painting because if you watch it one time full through you're going to be much more familiar and comfortable with the second time going through it slowly and painting and drawing along with it. So that's just a suggestion, but you don't have to do it that way, of course. Everyone, you're the artist, you know how to do your own uh, process of how you're going to create all of our wonderful paintings here. But uh, just wanted to mention that um, that's a good way to go. It kind of will work for you. Most people, that will work really well, uh, watching the video full through one time first. And then jumping in the next time, watching the video a second time, and then painting along with it. Um, but again, you're the artist, you make that decision, you know how to work your paintings the best way you can. And uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video, and I appreciate everyone coming by, and happy painting!